So critical analysis could be a, a slippery term that is difficult to get an absolute understanding about what it is. I'm gonna try and really help you with that by showing you critical analysis across your paragraph. So these will help you how to identify, how to search for, and how to know when you are doing critical analysis. And importantly, the different types of critical analysis that you can do to demonstrate to the markers that you've got a more complex paragraph. So let's start off with the first type of critical analysis and that's extension. So within this, there's a progression and development of discussion. You're extending a position. So perhaps you've got thinker A, uh, and think of B or source A and source B. And there's a furthering, there's an extending of the idea that B is giving to the thought of A. And therefore we're using bridge words such as similarly or furthermore to show this connection and development, this critical connection that B is furthering the idea. And sources may be furthering this idea and concept. Now a good example, I've got this to help you understand in my own field of management and organizations, we might be looking at a topic like emotional labor. So theorist A, thinker A, source A might be talking about emotional labor. And within your paragraph, you might say similarly or furthermore, thinker B has started to maybe look at collective emotional labor. So there's an extension of the thought of emotional labor to encapsulate something, a different way of looking at it, collective emotional labor. So importantly, what I said earlier on, you're showing this active relationship between sources. You're not just describing, you're showing these pathways, these critical pathways to show development and extensions. Next up, we've got narrowing. So what we can think about here is how you find focus from one study to another. So on a topic, something might be more specific or more nuanced. Theorist or thinker A in the first source might be suggesting something, but thinker B might have something more specific or nuanced in their study or their research that they're looking at. So we might use a conjunctive adverb such as additionally. So the bridge word between source A and source B might be additionally, thinker B has looked at it in this more nuanced way and found this out. And importantly, again, you're not just presenting the ideas of A and B, but you're showing a relational connection between A and B, that there's a pathway between them. Thirdly then, we've got contestation. And this is gonna mean points of difference across the paragraph. Now, academic fields, there's always raging debate and arguments and discussion which is going on. And we can think of a paragraph as almost like twists and turns and oppositions that might be found in your different sources and the topic that you're discussing. So these, if we think about how you might link them, if there's opposition, I like to call them the, the but or the however moments. And so A is saying this, however B in their research suggests this, or but B has gone on to look at it this way. So really then you're showing the nuance, sort of critical, active, purposeful engagement with sources and you're demonstrating that it's a, a divergent field with different thinkers having different perspectives. So an example I've got here is motivation. Within the field of trying to understand motivation at work, it's contested, there's divergence, there's different ways of thinking about how motivation occurs. And this can come from your, your research background, your understanding of the world, the different methods that you might use to try and understand motivation. And so if you can show that in your paragraph, these differences, these divergent thoughts, and bring them into contestation, then you're gonna get awarded higher marks because it's obvious to the marker that you're doing this. So so fourthly, we've got synthesis. And the way I want you to think about synthesis is that you've got two different ideas which are coming together to arrive at a third position. In this way, different things might be linked and there's almost a conceptual leaping, a, a connection. Now, a way that markers and module leaders and professors love is if you do this in the module that you're studying, that you don't just have a, a silo thinking of the one particular lecture or the particular theme of the assignment, but you're able to jump around. You're able to synthesize different knowledge points from across the module to create different understandings and different interesting discussions in your paragraph. So a nice example I've got in my own field here of management is how the identity of workers might be regulated by management and bosses. This might be done from object attachment, getting people attached to the things of work. And then that might lead us to the control of workers, soft management, controlling workers for the identity of regulation. Fifth one I want us to think about is revisions. 
Now, any academic field that you're going to be talking about in your assignment, it's not static, it's not fixed. Actually, it's always changing. There's an historical kind of difference in development to the discussions that academics are having. So if you can find out that historical critical pathway, then you're able to build up critical reflection within the field. So perhaps A did a study in 1970, perhaps B did a study in 1980, and perhaps there's been some development, some difference, some progression within that field and the two studies that you can show in your paragraph. And finally, we want to talk about evaluation. Now, evaluation is something that should be going on across all these types of critical reflection. Because in your paragraph, ultimately what you're doing, you should be constructing all these things with purpose to arrive at a conclusion. So really all throughout your paragraph as you're doing all these different things, then you're judging and you're evidencing as you go along because you're trying to construct a position through the paragraph that you arrive at at the end. So all of this should be done with direction. Any of the discussions and links that you're making throughout your paragraph and your sources, ultimately you're evaluating to get to a conclusion and a point and a belief that you want to discuss or make a statement of at the end of the paragraph. Okay, so now I've got a nice example that I wanna move on to to help us understand how we do all this better on the paragraph. I wanna try and get you to think about a paragraph and writing critically like a conversation. So in this, I want you to imagine in this analogy a gathering of people and thoughts Think of a party, and we're comparing a party to actually doing critical analysis. And we're gonna do this in a series of ways. So first of all, a party, we have to do the preparation. We've gotta invite the people. And a party is only as good as the people that we actually invite. Now, how does this then relate to writing critically? Well, firstly, we need to find and access the books. And of course, our critical analysis is only as good as the actual sources that we find. Then, like a party, we've got to think about having conversations there. So as a host, you've got to engage in, meet, and get to know the people coming to your party. So it has to relate to critical analysis. So really, it's a process of reading, getting to know the studies before you can have proper conversation. So understanding, getting to know the critical purpose of what you're going to be writing. Thirdly, a good host of a party, it skillfully draws people together and creates different conversations and puts similar people together and beliefs. Okay, so we've got a room full of people who are gonna be chattering. How does that relate to critical analysis? Well, critical scholarship is actually drawing relations, good or bad, between sources to create conversation, antagonisms, and agreement. So really, similarities are there. And also finally, surveying the party, the host might be seeing divergent groups, disagreements occurring, bringing two groups together perhaps to create an interesting discussion. You are the architect of the party. So let's go over to critical analysis. So again, very similar, you're mixing groups of scholars to create new and divergent pathways and positions across your paragraph. You are the architect of the critical story that you want to tell about what you are trying to answer in the essay. So an analogy here as well, if we've got a room, which is the actual party, and these are the people at the party, we've got different groups here and single people, and it's about how we are connecting them together as a host. And there's a multiplicity of different ways that you might draw connections with the people who are at your party in the room. The same again goes over for critical analysis. If these are all your different sources that you've researched and found at this stage and read, how are you going to bring them together? This is the important thing. What sort of relationships can you discover of any number of these different points? And this is the conversation of critical analysis, drawing together these pathways to ultimately have that critical dialogue. And importantly, we're gonna think about how language, how you use words, they create, words are the tools which create these pathways between critical analysis and paragraphs. And we're gonna take a look at that now, how words can help you form the critical pathways for your discussion.